Hey guys, in this tutorial, I show you how to bring your animations out of Flash in a glitch-free way. It's been brought to my attention by viewers of my tutorials that the export video function in Flash doesn't all the time work like it should. Sometimes your audio goes off sync, other times you have weird glitches in the video. It depends on the detail and the length of your video. And I have come across these issues a lot as well, depending on the complexity of my project. So I have come up with a way, it is a rather roundabout way, but I have come up with a way to get your movie out of Flash and converted so that it is glitch free and it gives you flexibility to edit your video in various ways as well. Now before I get started with this, I must point out that you need three pieces of software to achieve this. First you need Flash, which is obvious. Then you need an image to video converter. And there's only one software I know of that does this, and I'll get to that momentarily. And finally, you're going to need a video editing software. This can be anything from iMovie to uh, Windows Movie Maker to Premiere to Final Cut Pro, whatever your choice is. And just one more thing, I know there's a lot of disclaimers with this process, but I just want to make sure everyone's clear. When you do this, all of your audio in Flash will not be exported. You're going to have to reintegrate the audio after the export, which is where the video editing software will come in. Also, it's important that you make sure that your animation is set to where you want it because this can take a while to export. And so it can be a pain if you have to go back numerous times and tweak little things and then re-export over and over and over again. It can waste a lot of time and be, well, kind of redundant and a pain. So with all that said, let's get started. First, open up a project file that you may have been working on or create a short movie so that we can see this all in action. I have a project file open here that I haven't worked on in quite some time actually. It's kind of fun to look at again. But once you have that project file open, we'll begin the exporting process. Now, in the past, in my past tutorial, I showed you a way to export, and that was to go to File, Export, Export Movie, and then you would choose AVI or QuickTime, you would go through the settings, and then you would export it. And sometimes the results were mixed. And just to demonstrate what I mean by this, I did create a video based off of that procedure I just explained, and I will play it for you here. You can see that there are cases where the frames are skipping. Especially you'll see here when my character fires his gun, it like freezes momentarily. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Those are the glitches I'm talking about, and that's what we're going to do away with. So once you have your project file open, go to File, Export, Export Movie, and then locate the folder you want to export your movie into. Now, I must point out that I recommend that you create a separate folder for this, because what we're going to do is we're going to export this entire movie as a JPEG sequence. What this will do is it will export every single frame in your movie as a JPEG. So you can understand if you have a large movie, you're going to have a lot of different pictures. And so it's best to find a folder to isolate them. This will especially come in handy when we get to the second part where we convert the images to a video file. I will also point out too, that like the exporting the video process, this process will also make your movie clips static. So all your movie clips that are animated in your movie will not be animated when you export them in this fashion. So you might wanna go back and make those graphics if need be or do what you need to do to fix that. So once you have all that done, let's make a folder. We'll name it image stream. Double click to go into that. You can name the file name whatever you want and make sure save as type is set to JPEG sequence. You can do PNG sequence as well, but I usually do JPEG. Once you do that, click save. And here you can adjust your settings. You'll want the width and height to be the same uh, dimensions of your actual movie. 
the resolution set to 72, that is fine. And the quality you want all the way up. And you can select the progressive display option as well. And once you do that, you're gonna click OK. Now this might take a while because it's going to be exporting every single frame as an image. So depending on how large your movie is, this can take some time. So I will pause the movie and we will come back and we'll continue on. Once your image stream is complete, you can open up Finder or Windows Explorer, depending on your operating system, locate the folder in which you exported these images and double click. And here you'll now see that you have a bunch of images. I myself have 223 because that's how many frames I had. And you can double click on these and look at them and you'll see that every single frame has been exported. So the next step is to bring these images into a program so we can export it as a movie file. Now, I've done a quick Google search and I could not come up with any free images to video converters. Um, if any of you out there know of such a thing, please by all means post it in the comments section so we can help each other out here. I myself, for a few years now, have been using a program called Vision Lab Studio. It is a software made by FX Home, and if you go to fxhome.com, you can download a trial of it if you wish. This is the only software, again, to my knowledge, that does this, and I'm, you know, I don't know everything. Um, again, there might be a software out there that's free or cheaper than this that will easily do something like this, and if you know of it, please share it. But if you're following my tutorial up to this point, Open Vision Lab Studio and choose Select Image Stream. What it'll do now is it'll have you browse the folder in which you put your images into. So let me just pull it up here really quick. Right here, I'll click Image Stream and click OK. Now a project settings window will open and it should detect your settings based on your um, images, the dimensions of your images and such, but you can adjust the width and height if you wish. Make sure your frame rate is set to what you animated in Flash. That way everything can line up when you reincorporate your audio in the third step. And everything else should be good to go based on what I'm seeing here and I will click OK. Now, you'll notice that the um, video is on the screen and we can page through the timeline here and we can just see that it runs through and we can verify everything is there. Um, but once you have everything good to go, we will simply go to render and then render and then locate your project folder where you have all your files and we'll just name this um, test video or we can name it the video name that you want to name it and click save. Now you'll bring up some compression settings and this should be familiar if you have used these settings in the export video function of Flash. Although that might not have worked for you which is why we're doing it this way, it's still the same process. Um, I usually use the animation compression type in QuickTime, set it to best, millions of colors, and of course you can adjust your frame right here to where you had it. In this case, I had it at 30 frames per second and click OK. And now it will render the frames out. And again, depending on how many frames you have here, this can take a bit of time. OK, the image stream is now complete. I have opened up Adobe Premiere and made a new project. Now, at this point, you can use any type of video editing software that you want. Again, Windows Movie Maker is free iMovie is free. Those type of softwares will work just fine for this. But if you have something more advanced like Premiere or Final Cut Pro, by all means use that. So I have made a new project and I will choose the specifications for that project, in which case I made this movie 720p at 30 frames per second. So I will just choose that template and click OK. And now I can go into my project settings here and import the video in and just pop it right here on the timeline. 
And from here, we can play it. And you can see that even though the playback on my tutorial might be a little bit choppy, because it always is, but trust me, the playback worked beautifully and it played, there was no frame rate hitches, there were no problems. And that is the advantage to this. And now that you have it in a movie editing program, you can go through and add your audio back in if you have it. And then you can re-export the movie in any compression type you want and you can upload it to YouTube or you can share it in any way you wish. So again, I know this is a really roundabout way and it does have its disadvantages such as the audio not being with the export initially and the fact that if you made a mistake in your animation it's kind of a pain to go back and have to re-render all your images out again and then make a movie for it and make sure everything is good on that end. So it can take some tweaking and it does take time and it can be redundant. However, you might find the payoff to be worth it, especially if you're looking for a clean video export and if you're having trouble with that. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful and I'll see you next time.